I believe that we are live. Are we live? There we go. Good morning, everybody. Bear with bearindependent.com. Grabbing a link, dropping over here to the patrons so that they can participate in the show. Titles help. Bear. Report 5, Feb 21. Published now. There we go. Thank you all for being here. Kerry Stanek, good morning. Hey, listen, I appreciate y'all. Welcome to the Bear Report. It's Friday. And um, we've only got a couple of things to look at this morning. Two segments. China, Russia, and uh, nuclear weapons. And Joseph Rybinet, Biden, Biden Jr. And uh, the pandemic. So... Minor things. Minor things. Nunya, Texas on the back 20. I don't even know what that means, but good morning. Drop over here into screen share. Go over here into show notes. I hope everybody's having a blessed Friday morning. We'll get right into it. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. That helps us in the YouTube algorithm. Comments on this video when it posts a video helps us. Sharing gets around any algorithmic limitations that we may or may not have so that helps us greatly if you know somebody that needs to see this please share it out to them uh patreon is our backup and in addition to being our backup you can find over uh 50 exclusive pieces of content per month there on average that never sees the light of day anywhere else recently we've talked about mutual assistance groups uh bug out planning Firearms reviews, um, range drills, and a bunch of other stuff. Gardening, all there on Patreon because uh, that stuff isn't necessarily appreciated by the YouTube algorithm. So you can search Bear Independent at Patreon.com and you'll find us there. It's a dollar a month or 10 bucks a year to get started. And of course, Intel at uh, Bear Independent.com or you can go to bearindependent.com, which is spelled B-A-R-E-E-N-D-U-H-P-E-N-T-Z-L-M-N-O-Q-P-I-A plus dot com and, uh, or bearindependent.com. Click the contact page that takes you over here to the dance monkeys, the monkeys that dance. And then you can drop in some intel to us. Uh, we would appreciate that. That is how we compile these here reports, these broadcasts that we do every day. So, the U.S. Navy, Admiral Charles A. Richard, heading U.S. Strategic Command, a.k.a. STRATCOM. Get out of here with your headlines, you garbage website. There we go. Uh, STRATCOM has accused Russia and China of aggressively challenging global peace in ways not seen since the Cold War and taking advantage of the pandemic to advance their agendas. Well, that's a mighty powerful accusation there, buddy. Um, something that only the entire class of the ruling elites globally would actually do. So, again, minor impact on society. It's no big deal. Just, just taking advantage of the pandemic to advance their agendas. It's no biggie. He noted that the countries have bolstered their nuclear capabilities and have said that nuclear war with either country is a real possibility and that the U.S., quote, cannot dismiss or ignore events that currently appear unlikely, but should they occur, would have catastrophic consequences. Um, yep. That's what nuclear weapons do. They have catastrophic consequences. I mean, look at, look at Japan. We bombed Japan into complacency. Like, they won't even reproduce anymore. Yeah. Yeah. China continues to increase military presence in the South China Sea. Recently, tensions have elevated after a Chinese ship intruded on Philippine waters, and a joint statement was issued between four ministers from Japan and Britain, noting serious concern about the situation in the East and the South China Seas, and, quote, reaffirmed the importance of upholding freedom of navigation and overflight above the South China Sea, and urged all parties to exercise self-restraint and refrain from activities likely to raise tensions, end quote. 
they're nervous because China continues to flex its muscle in the South China Sea, and nobody really wants an open conflict with China at the moment, or in general. Y'all know me. I'm like, if we're going to have a fight, let's have a fight kind of guy. Let's look over here. Uh, from the New York Post, U.S. Admiral warns of real possibility with, of nuclear war with Russia and China. Let's try that again. Pause. Cut. Take two. <sighs> U.S. Admiral warns of real possibility of nuclear war with Russia and China by Yaron Steinbuch. I think he's Panamanian uh, with a name like that. The admiral who heads U.S. Strategic Command, which is responsible for nuclear deterrence, is calling on the nation's military and civilian leaders to seek new ways to face threats by Russia and China, including the real possibility of nuclear conflict. Admiral Charles Richard warned that Moscow and Beijing have begun to aggressively challenge international norms in ways not seen since the height of the Cold War. There is the real possibility that a regional crisis with Russia or China could escalate quickly to a conflict involving nuclear weapons if they perceived a conventional loss would threaten the regime or the state. Yeah, this is exactly, well, not exactly, but it's very similar to what happened in World War II when we Americans counted the cost of actual land warfare in Japan if we were to invade. The Japanese were entrenched. They were quite determined to not let us win. And so it was hundreds of thousands of U.S. soldiers and Marines that, uh, who would have had their lives spent attacking that position or drop a couple of bombs. Cost-benefit analysis. We dropped a couple of bombs. Did those bombs come from Nazi Germany? Maybe. <laughs> That's a whole nother woo, conspiracy theory already. We're barely into the brief. Whatever. Does it matter at this point? No. Quote, back to the article, Consequently, the U.S. military must shift its principal assumption from nuclear employment is not possible to nuclear employment is a very real possibility and act to meet and deter that reality. And so the point here is the this admiral... Charles A. Richard is saying that uh, nuclear weapons could be back on the table for Russia and China. Therefore, we should consider having them back on the table as well. This is more mad. Mutually assured destruction. Hmm. Remember, we've talked at great lengths here at this channel that war in its most basic form is the allocation of of certain resources against the acquisition of or defense of other resources. <laughs> Unfortunately, those resources uh, tend to have heartbeats and real meaningful lives. They're people. I don't want war. War sucks. Do I want nuclear war? No, not even a little bit. But this admiral's like, could be possible. So, y'all can read the remainder of this article from the show notes that are posted down below in the description and then also posted on Patreon. Over here from Reuters.com. U.S. military slams Chinese flights over South China Sea but says they posed no threat by Phil Stewart and Yamu Li. You knew lead. That sounds like a Frenchman right there. Washington, Reuters, Dateline, Washington. U.S. military said on Friday that Chinese military flights in the past week in the South China Sea fit a pattern of destabilizing and aggressive behavior by Beijing, but posed no threats to the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike group in the region. What we got right here? What CVN is that? Oh. The uh, Teddy Roosevelt, U.S. Navy aircraft carrier. The U.S. Theodore Roosevelt carrier strike group closely monitored all People's Liberation Army Navy, that makes sense, the PLAN, and Air Force PLAAF activity, and at no time did they pose a threat to U.S. Navy ships, aircraft, or sailors. The U.S. military's Pacific Command said in a statement, 
A U.S. official speaking on conditions of anonymity said the Chinese aircraft did not come within 250 nautical miles or 460 kilometers of the U.S. Navy vessels. Taiwan reported that several Chinese Air Force aircraft flew into the southwestern corner of its air defense identification zone last weekend. What's up with these words? Let's get some plain English up in here. Some jets from China flew into the corner of Taiwan's controlled airspace near the Taiwan-controlled Pratas Islands, including fighter jets and nuclear-capable H-6 bombers. Regional security and diplomatic sources familiar with the situation said China's Air Force was dispatched on missions beginning mid-morning on 23 Jan, coinciding with the U.S. carrier group passing south of the Pratas. So China, and this goes on from on and on and on, this article goes, the, the point here is that China militarily expects that the United States is going to be its greatest threat. And so they're conducting operations not in our face, but next to our face. It's almost like, you know when you have two kids or you had a sibling growing up, and one of them was like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, and then the other one, yeah. It's almost like that, right? Now, I don't know if we need to jump in the rabbit hole as to whether or not China wants military conflict with the United States right now, but they're certainly preparing for it as if it will become a reality. From uh, documentcloud.org, the link for this is also in the description and on Patreon. All these links, everything I'm going to, everything I'm showing you here is in the description. South China Sea disputes background and policy in recent years. Oh, never mind. There we go. From the Congressional Research Service, South China Sea disputes. Overview. Multiple Asian governments assert sovereignty over rocks, reefs, and other geographic features in the heavily trafficked South China Sea, with the People's Republic of China, PRC, or simply China, arguably making the most assertive claims. The United States makes no territorial claim in the South China Sea and takes no position on sovereignty over any of the geographic features in the South China Sea, but has urged that disputes be settled without coercion and on the basis of international law, meaning that, hey, just because you say you now own this island doesn't necessarily mean you own this island and if somebody raises a hand and says hey bro you don't own that island maybe we shouldn't just fighter jet strike them call on an airstrike maybe we go to a court of law first now that sounds a little idealistic um, when dealing with China in their own backyard this would be similar let's say there were a bunch of islands out in the Gulf of Mexico and the United States and, for example, Mexico, were contesting the control of these islands. It'd be similar to China saying, hey, guys, just simmer down. We don't need to be having any conflict over those islands in the Gulf of Mexico. Like, dude, shut up. You're China. You're, it's our Gulf of Mexico. And, yes, that sounds weird to say it's the United States' Gulf of Mexico. But, Mexico, if you want some, you can come get some. We're taking these islands. So, anyway. Since 2013, the sovereignty disputes and the U.S.-China dispute over the freedom of the seas for military ships and aircraft have converged in the controversy over military outposts China has built on disputed features, those are those rocks, those reefs, those islands, in the South China Sea. U.S. officials saw the outpost as part of a possible Chinese effort to dominate the South China Sea with the goal of making China a regional hegemon that can set the rules by which other regional actors must operate, i.e., they're going to walk onto the playground, say, this swing set is mine, and if anybody else has a problem with it, you come see me, I'll let you know whether or not your problem is valid. They're going to set the rules for the playground. A long-standing goal of U.S. strategy has been to prevent the emergence of such a regional hegemon. At this January 2021 confirmation hearing, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin asserted that China is, quote, already a regional hegemon and seeks to become, quote, a dominant world power. I'm glad we got this guy in there. He knows what he's talking about. This is, uh, yeah, yeah, secret squir uh, squirrel stuff right here. Very few people already know that China is already a dominant world power, so I guess the secret's out there. 
Uh, back to the article. Observers have been alert to other actions China might take to dom dominate the South China Sea, including initiating reclamation on another South China Sea geographic feature, such as the Scarborough Shoal, or declaring an air defense identification zone over parts of the SCS. Let's see if we can zoom in on this obnoxiously large. There we go. So here's the South China Sea right here. You've got China, you've got Taiwan, you've got the Philippines here, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia. You've got Brunei and Malaysia down here. Then you've got the Paracel Islands, the Scarborough Shoal, and the Spratly Islands. And now the size of these islands or these features have been um, enlarged for the purposes of visibility so that you can see them here on the map. But essentially what China is saying is that within this dotted line right here, China's nine dash line, all of this inside of here is theirs. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nations that are all sharing some type of coastline here in the South China Sea. And China's like, that's cool. You know, what's that international waters is what, 20 miles from the shores? That's cool. You can, you can have all the water right there that's next to your country, 20 miles out. But once you pass this nine dotted line, that's ours. And they're doing that by putting features or putting buildings, developing uh, and placing troops on these features in the South China Sea. And it, it's ours now, our playground. That's fine. You can, you can swing on the swing set, but we're going to tell you when and how long. And uh, if we don't like it, we're going to kick you off the playground. So that's the, kind of the crux of the issue here, South China Sea. We have a carrier group in there that Teddy Roosevelt has stated. They're like more down here, whereas the jets are flying uh, up in this area, China and Taiwan. Uh, but nuclear-capable bombers and fighter jets, that's a, that's a great time. Gets back to the whole, yeah, you know, I'm not saying you got to put, like, a crock pot on top of your head and go dig a hole and crawl under the ground and stay there and wait for the bombs to fall. I'm just saying that you might want to have a plan to put a crock pot on top of your head, dig a hole, and then go live in the ground as a mole person for the next year or two until the fallout subsides. Uh, things that make actual sense. We have a Stop the Bleed class coming up in the Nashville area uh, at refugemedical.com. You can check us out there. 350 bucks. It includes the $115 TCCC trainer class, which means with the cost of the class, you're going to get your trainer tourniquet, your trainer chest seals, your trainer compressed gauze, your trainer combat gauze, your trainer um, six inch emergency trauma dressing, trainer decompression needle, eye shield, gauze, tape, all the, all the things. You get all those things that come with the class. They're yours. You keep them. And so that way when you get shot in the left arm, you can just casually apply a tourniquet like so without even really thinking about it because it's something that you do regularly, you've been trained in. Then you can go and take said equipment back to your family. And, uh, man, fumble fingers today. There it is. And teach them how to not die if uh, they have an arterial bleed. So... That's coming up in the Nashville area. Please check that out at refugemedical.com. Then, of course, while we're here, let's just take a quick look at the bare minimum. Oh, stomp bag. That thing is sexy. You know, when I put the stomp bag together, I put, I put together two of them for Grindstone. And uh, Grindstone being our charitable organization. And I was like, nobody's ever going to buy one of these. They're big. They're expensive. They're heavy. But I built the stomp bag, which is SEAL Team Operational Medical Pack. I built two of them for Grindstone because we tend to operate in austere environments. And we needed a, a hospital on our back. And I shot a video about it. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, now if y'all know how to, if y'all want one, you know how to make one. Man, we were inundated with, where can I buy a stomp bag? Boom, right there. Stomp bag at the website. Mass casualty kit. Mac 4, Mac 8, got all the things here. The crash kit, that's like, this was literally designed for Baja racing in the desert. Let's go look at the bare minimum. That's this guy right here. That's this guy right here. It's 
It's bare minimum. Handmade, made in America, guaranteed forever. If you break it, I'll buy you another one. If you use the contents to save the life, I'll buy you another one. You molly it onto your kit. When you got an issue, you pull this thing out like so. You got your combat gauze in the top right there. You add that right here by you cl by clicking this little box. You can get these things in red, gray, black, OD green, Coyote tan, multicam, Marpat, and Ranger green. Ranger green is a it's, that's a new thing right there. Pop this tab open. Boom. Tape, pressure dressing, nitro gloves, Gen 7 cat tourniquet, decompression needle, shears, high fin chest seals, nasal pharyngeal airway, and two 5 by 9 gauze pads. Everything you need, nothing you don't, to stop a bleed. RefugeMedical.com. Do we still have a live stream? We sure do. 923 people are here. 297. Thumbs ups. Thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, tourniquet off now since my left arm is numb. Ah. How do I buy a medic with it? Shield Bearer of Faith. Good morning, brother. I don't know if Shield Bearer of Faith was in the house. Look at all that. Dudley, good morning. Tommy Salter, good morning. Mark O'Connor, Cot Lumber and Canada loves you. Now listen, if you're out there in the woods with your two-man saw, wearing a nice flannel t-shirt, and you know what? You're tired of drinking maple syrup all day and chasing moose, and you need a nice place to relax, go on down to Cot Lumber. Get yourself a nice cup of black coffee. Maybe shoot the breeze on how come that number two pine is up so high. It's because of the global elitists. And you know, what's a better saw? Is it is a Johnson Red or is it a Husqvarna? Have you tried the 562? I don't know. I really like the steel 442. Really? You're a steel guy, not a husky guy? Yeah. Yeah, I really am. Cot Lumber. They got everything you need to survive the zombie pandemic uh, up there in Canada. If there's zombie mooses chasing down, chasing you down the street with their little face panties on, you can just retreat to Cot Lumber, buy some three-quarter inch tongue and groove OSB to screw over your windows so the zombies can't get in. The guys there will treat you right at CotLumber.com. Good morning, Perry Skillman. A gang saw. That's right, cat. A gang saw. 372. Now that is a phenomenal saw as well. I would agree. What are we talking about now? Recent updates on updates on the pandemic front. J. Johns. Lumber is expensive because everyone is building bug out cabins. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. Good morning, everybody in the chat. Tavar7, good morning, good morning to all the blue wrenches. I appreciate y'all. Let's see here. So, uh, recent updates on the pandemic front. An executive order from Bravo India Delta Echo November. Joe Biden. Means now that anyone found unmasked on public transit can be booted off at the nearest stop and they could be hit with fines and federal civil charges. You could also kiss my hairy white ass. Just so we're all on the same page. Cool. Uh, the CDC does not make teacher, teacher vaccination a prerequisite for school opening, which is good if you're not prerequisite, meaning that you can still do that. If you're a teacher and you want the vax, go ahead and get it. But you don't have to. That's actually a good move. And according to federal employment law, employers can require workers to get vaccinated against COVID-19. But states are fighting back, proposing laws and citing anti-discrimination. Conflicted employers are caught in the middle for the time being as the legal landscape continues to shift. So here from The Hill, Biden is weighing direct shipments of masks to Americans. Semicolon, no, full colon, report. I'm reporting. You decide. Or whatever. Look at this. This looks like a Condor EMT ripaway pouch. That's lovely. It is. It's a Condor ripaway EMT pouch from LAPoliceGear.com. Good for you. I don't know how they have those in stock because Condor's not shipping anything globally currently. But I digress. The White House is reportedly looking at coordinating mask shipments directly to Americans as part of the latest effort by President Biden's administration to curb the spread of COVID-19. And so in my report over here, segment two, free money? Nah, free face diapers, yo. So forget about that 2000 bucks you were going to get. Instead, you're going to get your uh, 
free masks in the mail. And by free, we mean we took 40% of your paycheck, we blew at least half of that on garbage that you're never going to need, and then we spent some of that on these masks that we're going to send to you to encourage you to wear them. Um, you know, maybe if I'm like sanding an oak floor for refinishing or something, that, that could be useful. Um, but yeah, for stopping the, the Gina virus, nah, nah, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. NBC News first reported the plans Thursday, citing three people familiar with the discussions. I, you know what, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I, I'm not wearing them. I don't care. I might put them in my bug out bag in case there's dust and debris that I have to deal with if I ever have to bug out. That could be useful. Um, I might put them in my bug out bag in case uh, we have to go gray man and look like all the sheeple. That could be useful. But if you think I'm going to wear that thing in rural Oklahoma, you're out of your damn mind. Nobody. I, I, I shouldn't say nobody. Some people do wear them here. But there, I think there's more that don't than there are that do. Well, that's dangerous. Yes, I would much prefer dangerous liberty than comfortable tyranny. Have I mentioned kiss my hairy white ass? All right, moving right along. The Guardian, uh, MSN.com, documenting Todd at YouTube. I'm documenting. That's what I'm doing. The CDC says schools can reopen even if teachers have not had a COVID vaccine. Centers for Disease Control asserted on Wednesday that U.S. schools can safely reopen even if teachers have not received the coronavirus vaccine, while the top U.S. infections experts supported the idea of wearing two face masks. That is the dumbest blargy blarg blarg I've ever heard. Two face masks? It, that's... They're trolling you, people. They are trolling you. As some teachers' unions balked at resuming in-person instruction before teachers are inoculated, the CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, said vaccination of teachers is not a prerequisite for safe reopening of schools. Here's the thing, and maybe it's because um, teaching is such a highly unionized um, career but whatever happened to personal responsibility, if you're a teacher and you don't want to go to work because it's dangerous there, then don't go to work. You know, the first business I ever owned was cutting timber and climbing trees with a chainsaw. It was a little dangerous. In fact, I've been cut with a chainsaw three times. In fact, I broke my sternum in a logging accident. In fact, there's not a finger or toe I, or I own that hasn't been broke at least one time, many of them multiple times. In a few short years, this is risk versus reward. You're getting paid to do a job. You don't want to do the job? Fine. Don't do the job. You want to do the job? Fine. Assume the risk. But quit nerfing all the edges and think about the freaking example you're setting for children. Look at this right here. You think this is normal? Look at this kid. He's got his mask on. He's got a face shield here. There's freaking sawhorses set up here so that we can all social distance. This is not normalcy. Not even close to normalcy. And this teacher here assumes certain risks within the line of work that she has. The world is dynamic. The world is ever-changing. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Oh, there's a global pandemic, and I'm a teacher. Roger that. That's cool. I get it. There's a global pandemic, and I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. I run ministries. I get it. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Because that person, that teacher has to absorb the inherent risks of doing their job. I can't absorb it for them. And that kid shouldn't have to absorb it for them either. Are kids just basically walking Petri dishes? Yes. Yes, they are. 
I have three children. They are walking Petri dishes. There's like snot running out of their nose and they're like covered in mud and dirt. And you're like, hey, don't lick the windows. And, you know, why are you trying to kiss the dog? And it, they're kids. You know what? The more they do of that, though, the more robust their uh, immune system is. And it's no surprise that kids are Petri dishes. This is not new. The issue is that we've over-exaggerated the deadliness of this disease to the point where this kid is being encouraged to wear two masks and stay six feet apart and wear that stupid face shield as if he's going to be grinding a weld in kindergarten. It's stupid. So, teachers, you want to go back to work? Go back to work. More power to you. Bless you. Thank you for doing the job that you do. You don't want to go to back to work? Don't go back to work. But you don't have the right to work any more than I have the right to work. You have to assume the risk that comes with the job. Simple as that. Get another job. Go cut timber. Go fell some logs with the guys that caught lumber. Go run a 648 grapple skitter. That's fun. You would enjoy running a 648 grapple skitter. From the Greenville Sun, right here, can an employee object to mandatory COVID-19 vaccinations on religious grounds? We've discussed this quite a bit, and here you got somebody getting the jab right up here. Uh, the conversation. The rollout of vaccines across the U.S. is blah, 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 nobody cares. In December, Equal Opportunity Employment Commission... The body responsible for interpreting said blah, 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 blah. In terms of religion, the commission points towards Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. This legislation requires employers to reasonably accommodate an employee's sincerely held religious belief, practice, or observance, but only if the accommodation can be made without undue hardship on the employer's business. We've talked a bit about that. What is undue hardship? Whether an objection on religious grounds is accepted will depend on whether it is deemed to not cause the business undue hardship, a phrase that has long been the subject of court interpretation. On this, the new blah, 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 blah. In terms of COVID-19 vaccinations, workplaces such as bars, gyms, and restaurants could conceivably claim undue hardship in accommodating religious exemptions to vaccines on the grounds that doing so increases the spread of infection among the customers and employees. This whole thing is a sham, man. It's, it's a sham. It's highly politicized. We said a year ago they're doing this to crash land the world's economy. We know why. It's the Great Reset. I mean, boom. It's, it's right here. Look, this is why it is. It's the Great Reset. This is what they want to do. But the COVID numbers are going down, and good news uh, the Biden administration is up to 1.3 million doses of the vax per day. Cool. When Trump left office, it was 1.5. So you're 200,000 per day less than what he was doing. Great. Great. And the vaccine numbers are going down. Oh, it's awesome. Man, who cares? I don't care. I, this like, and it, it's maybe it's because I don't spend a lot of time in, in the system. I'm not on public transportation. So I don't care. I don't work in the healthcare industry, so I don't care. My kids don't go to public schools, so I don't care. I'm not going into stores, so I don't care. I don't, I don't travel, so I don't care. I just don't, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. Well, what happens when they, well, then I'll deal with it when it affects me. But it doesn't affect me. But it's not like I woke up yesterday and I was like, you know what? Tomorrow, Friday the 5th, that's the day. I'm going to extract myself from this broken and corrupt system. That'll be the day, man. I'm doing it tomorrow morning. No, it's a, it's a game of inches. You know, we produce as much of our own food as possible. We teach our own children. We have our own businesses. Um, we own our own land. Like We're doing everything that we can to be really strong as a community on the micro so that when the macro acts stupid, it affects us less. I, I don't care. I mean, I care 
I care for the people that are affected by this, but this is a second order of operations caring. It's not first order ops. It doesn't directly affect me. Now, I will absolutely scream religious exemption from the rooftops uh, because we operate a ministry based upon religious principles. You're not sticking that thing in my arm. And this is something, I was thinking about this yesterday. If we're going to get into a, a game of poking holes in people, there's a certain subset of the population that's far better at poking holes in people than others. The risk of litigation. The cost of potential litigation alone may be cause for employers to think twice about not providing religious exemptions from any mandatory vaccine requirement. During the H1N1 pandemic, blah, 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 there were three lawsuits. The lawsuits were generally unsuccessful, but some plaintiffs were able to successfully persuade hospitals to settle with the EEOC settling cases for amounts ranging from approximately $74,000 to $300,000. With the current guidelines, while the current guidelines are more permissive of vaccination policies than the guidelines issued during the H1N1 pandemic, it is impossible to know the exact approach of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission will take regarding religious exemptions. So the government's going to decide whether or not your religion uh, is sufficient for you to not get jabbed. That's going to go well. I mean, I... I we should definitely just look to history here and understand fully that uh, when the government decides whether or not you get to exercise your individual liberties, it goes well for the people. I mean, it, it really does. They're, they're just so benevolent and kind and uh, respectful of individual liberties. So really nothing to worry about here at all. I mean, it's fine. They, there's, it's fine. Just trust them. Just trust them. It's... Yes, maybe they're trying to take your firearms because genocide historically follows uh, gun confiscation and registration. And um, genocide is typically a tool that's used to reduce the civilian population. In fact, it's been referred to by Wikipedia as democide, which is when governments kill unarmed combatants. And socialism slash communism has killed through democide somewhere around 100 million people in the last 100 years, to say nothing of the 40 to 70 million that were then starved to death. Because, hey, there's not going to be enough food in the near future, and that's fine. If you are not a model citizen, then your religious exemptions no longer apply. And if you don't take the vaccine, you can't play in the system. And the system may show up and say, get on the bus, or we're going to shoot you through the leg with a 30 out 6 round or something like that. And uh, to which I respond, no. No, I don't think I'm doing that. I do like how this lady has like, she went with the cross, like the crossover around the ear with her mask. That was, that's very, uh, you know, that's unique. This guy's double masked. Look at him. Maybe his oxygenation is so low that he tripped and fell over because he can't breathe and accidentally just stuck that in that lady's arm. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care. I do care about AdventureFrontier.com, though. So if you want to support a good American small business, uh, you can get your armor and your IFAX from AdventureFrontier.com. You got your Spartan armor. They got all the things, man. Level 3, level 3 plus, level 4. Uh, single curve, triple curve, anti-spall coating. All the blah blahs, man. They they got all that stuff at adventurefrontier.com. You can use promo code Bear Nation for ten bucks off your armor. They've also got your bear fact and your bear minimum right down here. So if you need to buy an IFAC with your armor, which I would recommend doing, you can do that right here. And then of course, now that you have your cool armor, you might you might stick a glow in the dark fluffy bunny patch on there to rep Adventure Frontier out there in the world when you're doing the things. So please check them out. Small business adventure frontier.com. You've got the great reset over here. We've talked about them quite a bit. I don't really want to jump into them today other than to say that I think we need to be doing a really good job thinking about how do we combat their lines of effort and there's a lot of them. I mean it just there's a lot of them. 
I, I almost want to go through, do a thought exercise where we take each one of these uh, lines of effort and do a compare contrast and figure out, um, first of all, is there a benefit to um, liber liberty minded personal responsibility individuals like us to any of these so that we're not working against ourselves on these lines of effort and if there is quantify that benefit and find out how do we how do we support those things if there's not a benefit how do we combat those things what how do we take positions against those undermine the authority that's required to perform those lines of effort how do we develop our own lines of effort. Now, that is in of itself reactive rather than proactive, but it's a place to start because at least it allows us to get our ideas out. I mean, the artificial intelligence, future of computing, blockchain, digital economy, and new value creation, blah, 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 all this stuff, man, they've got it planned out, the big they. They have this really well planned out. Um, and it's one thing to be aware of it, which is one of the things that I'm trying to encourage people to be more and more aware of this. It's another thing to st start thinking on and planning on how do you combat this that's reactive. And once you have a strategy to combat it, then you can clearly define the mission, put out your objectives, state your objectives for that mission, and develop your lines of effort to accomplish those objectives so that you can be proactive so that the Great Reset, well, and it very well may happen on most of the face of the earth. How do you avoid martial law? Don't be where it is. How do you avoid nuclear holocaust? Don't be where it is. How do you avoid the Great Reset? Don't be where it is. challenge with that is it's global. But I think there's going to be pockets of freedom that pop up. Um, in the post-Trump America that we find ourselves in, and quite possibly balkanization. But in order for balkanization to happen, they're going to have to keep stoking the flames of the us-versus-them dichotomy, that false narrative of left versus right, conservative versus liberal, white versus black, poor versus rich, all of that that gets people all spun up, the us-versus-them, because if we ever realize that rather than all being individuals, which I'm all for individual responsibility. I'm all for individual rights. But if we ever did this and coalesced into a fist and just punched back, forget it. And so that divide and conquer strategy is working quite well for them. But I think it would be very, it would be a great thought exercise to look at the lines of effort here in this great reset and determine what would be an appropriate response to each one of these things? Start mapping that out. All right. And that's it. That's the show today. I appreciate y'all. Y'all rock. 1,368 people here and only 628 likes. That's okay. It's tough to hit that little thumbs up button. I get it. You got to move your thumb all the way from here to here in order to do it. And I don't want you to burn that calorie in a half. You might need it when the socialists show up and say you can't buy food at the store anymore. So I, I totally get it. I, I understand. I totally understand. Bless y'all. I see the numbers jumping. Thank y'all. Sergeant Storms. Shaloha. Grindstoneministries.com. So I think y'all know about Grindstone. If you don't know about Grindstone, go to grindstoneministries.com. You'll learn more about grindstoneministries.com. Grindstoneministries.com is badass. The rescue and rehabilitation of survivors of human trafficking and sex crimes. And uh, we are 100% supported by you. So if you'd like to support us, you can check us out at grindstoneministries.com. Um, you've got disastercoffee.com. Over here, huge supporter of the show. I recommend everybody go get your bunker beans for long-term storage. Chaffee Oats Cigar Collection. If you're a smoker, a connoisseur of fine cigars, check them out. I love their mission statement. It's time to see human trafficking go up and smoke. And so, if you'd like a good smoke, 
that supports a good mission, go check out Chaffeyote at chaffeyotecollection.com. Amendment 1, preparedness, the canned ham. If you are into preparedness and need to work on your combo game, then you go to amendment the number one preparedness.com and you get you a fat 50 can with a 25 watt radio and antenna and everything you need right inside of it right there battery backup ready to go see that will hook up to your 12 volt external power source whether it's you know the plug in from your truck or your car or your solar panel or your additional battery whatever you got awesome piece of equipment and let's not forget sanctified supplyco.com if you're a human being and you wear clothes like this right here, our brother Hobie. Look at this majestic creature. Look at this. Hold on, I gotta zoom out a little bit. So look at this majestic creature right here. If you wanna be at least this cool, you have to go to sanctifiedsupplyco.com and get the Grindstone Ministries North Division shirt. Isn't this just the this is how you, you make your Friday right here? Look at this. Look at this brother Hobie. Phenomenal. SanctifiedSupplyCo.com. You'd also get your Iron Sharpens Iron T-shirts and hoodies. They're the best. Tremendous. Believe it. I also would like to point out, before I get into the silver linings, um, I'm not a rap or a hip-hop fan, but uh, I heard Tom McDonald on The Blaze yesterday on Glenn Beck's show, and I was just blown away by this guy. And I've got to tell you, I've listened to more hip-hop in the last 12 hours than I have in my entire life. Specifically, this guy, Tom McDonald. And Tom, I don't know if you're ever going to see this. I don't expect that you are. But you're a total badass. Absolutely total badass. And I appreciate you speaking truth and shining light into the darkness. And uh, your story of overcoming through the Father, through addiction and depression, um, to be the person that you are now and to spit truth resonates with me. I think you're absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate you. So those of you who are out there um, who are perhaps into rap or hip hop but who haven't heard of Tom McDonald, I would recommend you check out Tom McDonald. Dude is awesome. And I'm a metalhead, y'all. I'm a metalhead, and so this is a metalhead telling you, go check this guy out. So, all right, let's read the silver linings. A viewer said, my daughter and I will finally have a place to call home. Praise the Father. Three months overdue, I closed on a house with 1.6 acres in the country. It even has a creek. There's lots of work ahead, including new electric and moving our literal tons of bagged food out of storage. Plans for a large garden in the works. Thank you, Bear and the team, for showing me the light. It can be done, Bear Nation. From uh, somebody I know personally. After four months since I left my job on your porch, I finally heard back from four of them while coming back from arming the saints. Four... Uh, people that he applied to jobs for and I'll be starting work in the next two weeks it's over and above what they originally promised and Yah has provided abundantly through my wife's business and grandmother huge shout out to Ashley Storms his wife this is Sergeant Storms writing in for keeping her wits about her and keeping her heart at peace as we walk through a very dark valley many women have done nobly but she excels exceeds them all and I am known in the gates by the elders because of her works. Hey, man. That's a Proverbs 31 quote. Well done, brother. Well done, sister. That is awesome. We had somebody write in who took the uh, TCCC class as well. I guess this is kind of a, a uh, silver lining. Making holes and knowing how to plug them. TCCC training, September 2020. First, Bear, thank you for uh, thank you and your family for your TCCC classes. I've taken hands-on classes to learn how to make holes, and it made sense to take a class on how to keep someone alive if me or they ended up with a hole. 
I had an old friend friend show up at my door in the middle of the night and experienced a negligent discharge six days before. With no insurance and nowhere to go for help, he ended, ended up on my doorstep with a bag of supplies and instructions on how to care for the half-dollar size hole he had received to his chest. Huh. I must say, doing the thing sucks. Taking the TCCC class to practice packing a deep hole in a person that didn't show up with pain meds or antibiotics, priceless. I cannot thank you enough. It has been a few days and the hole is not infected and his lung is not leaking. Things are different when a friend survives stupid and could die from infection because you were never taught how to stuff gauze in a hole. And it turns out the doctor... So finally a guy goes to the doctor, which is a good idea. I would recommend that in the first place. Turns out the doctor didn't recommend antibiotics after his six-day meds that he had received. And so that's from Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, I'm glad your friend is alive. Let's work on a couple of things. Step one, let's not have negligent discharges. Step two, if we do have negligent discharges and bullet holes are made in people, just go to the hospital. They, they will take care of you. If there's not a hospital, I'm glad that you attended our TCCC class and understood how to deal with something like that. So, phenomenal work, Rebecca. And that, SL Reporto. Psalms 90, Yahuwah, you have been our refuge in all generations before the mountains were born, or you had brought forth the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are Elohim. You turn man back to dust and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your eyes are like yesterday that has passed, or like a watch in the night. You have swept them away. They are as asleep, like grass that springs up in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and springs up, at evening it is cut down and withered. For we have been consumed by your displeasure and by your wrath, we are alarmed. You have set our crookedness before you, our secret sin in the light of your face. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We spend our years like a whisper. The days of our lives are seventy years, or have due strength eighty years. Yet the best of them is but toil and exertion. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your displeasure and your wrath according to the fear of you? Teach us to number our days and let us bring the heart to wisdom. Return, O Yahuwah, how long? And be sorry for your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving commitment and let us sing for joy all our days. Give us joy according to the days you have afflicted us, the years that we have seen evil. Reveal your work to your servants and your splendor to their children, and let the pleasantness of Yahuwah our Elohim be upon us, and confirm the work of our hands for us. O oh, confirm the work of our hands. Good morning, Father Yah. Father, thank you for the opportunity to do this. Father, thank you for everybody within the sound of my voice. Father, thank you for your miraculous provision and blessing. Father, for new lives, for striving with us that have known you but rejected you and for allowing us to seek your face by the blood of Yeshua. Father, thank you for being sovereign over all things. Thank you that even though the world is a mess, you're not. You know what you're doing. And that your ways are truth and wisdom and strength. Your ways are just. Thank you for making a clear contrast between the world and between you. Father, I pray you would open the eyes and ears of those within the sound of my voice that don't see you, that don't know you, that are not interested in pursuing you, that don't know where to give their thanks at the end of a day filled with blessings that they would consider a coincidence. Father, 
Father Yah, if there is anything within the sound of my voice that is not of you. We come together in agreement and we rebuke it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm commanded to flee. Father, please fill us up with your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, for wisdom and discernment, for strength and power and authority, for healing and for peace. Father, be near to us and teach us how to continue to walk in your ways. Convict us to be your hands and feet and do your will and go where you send us. And Father, please continue to protect and provide and bless those within the sound of my voice. And I ask these things in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And with that, Shabbat Shalom, my friends and loved ones. We will see you soon. Have a blessed Friday. Bear out.